The Basics of ZXDC with CXDC. Hi, I'm Becca Cole, Media Developer at ColeSoft Marketing. This series of videos is designed to help you learn more about CXDC, a new component feature of ZXDC available with release Z2.2 that allows you to test your XLC, C++, and Metal C programs. In this video, we'll talk about the basics of ZXDC with CXDC, the general layout, basic preferences, default settings, and profiles, with an emphasis on what's been added for the new C features. Keep an eye out for the help headings listed on the left-hand side of the screen so you can reference topics in greater depth later on in the built-in help or in the PDFs on our website. Also remember that you can pause this video at any time if I move through topics too quickly. When you start a debugging session in ZXDC, the first screen you'll see is ZXDC's opening salvo, which is made up of two main parts. The top portion, showing ZXDC's copyright information and other helpful comments, is called the working window. The bottom portion with its own command line is called the watch window. The working window is the primary window where you will do the bulk of your debugging work and issue most of your ZXDC commands. The working window is a view of the log of all commands and responses that have been executed. You can enter commands on the ZXDC command line, or you can enter single character shortcut commands in the underscores that occur down the left side of the display, or you can do both. The permitted shortcut commands for any line depend upon the context of that line. You can enter a question mark to get a list of valid shortcut commands for that line. With the list of valid shortcut commands displayed, you can enter an H in the underscore of the XDC command line in order to pull up a detailed explanation of all of the shortcut commands. Lines with a period instead of an underscore will only accept an H for context-sensitive help. Sometimes the amount of information present may exceed the height of a window display. In those cases, ZXCC will show a double asterisk in the shortcut field, which indicates more information is available below the current view. When this indicator is present, you may press P of key 8 for down to see the next block of lines. All commands issued from a working window and all display messages sent to a working window are written into a permanent session log, usually located on a spool. Whenever you issue a command, its response is appended at the bottom of the log, and the display is positioned in the log to show you that response. When you page up on the screen, you are paging up through the session log. On the other hand, when you page down, one of two things happens. If you are not already positioned at the bottom of the log, then you will be paging down through the log. If you are already positioned at the bottom of the log, and if the last thing displayed in the log is storage, ZXDC will automatically issue commands to append more storage to the log and then position you to view it. In other words, paging down from the bottom of the log looks like you're paging down through storage. Watch windows are secondary windows intended for persistent displays of whatever you would like. The watch window automatically refreshes or executes every time your program is halted so that you can watch as the program progresses. You can issue any ZXDC command from a watch window command line. However, only display type commands are retained for re-execution. Action type commands are removed from the string after the first execution. You can string together multiple commands using semicolons, and a double semicolon will create a blank line to make the display more readable. Unlike with the working window, commands and messages displayed in a watch window are not saved in a session log. They are simply discarded. Messages are also not saved in a scroll area, so they are only available during the current execution of the watch window's command string. Watch windows have default command lines depending on which profile you're using, but you are encouraged to modify or add other commands to the watch command line as you see fit. We'll talk more about the default watch window commands shortly when we discuss profiles. Watch windows can be created by positioning the cursor where you want the new command line and pressing PF key 13 for set window create, or they can be removed by positioning the cursor within an existing watch window and pressing PF key 1 for set window delete. ZXDC allows up to 15 watch windows. Watch window layouts, including locations and command strings, are saved by the profile save command, 
so you can save different layouts under different names and recall them easily with the profile read command. We'll talk more about these commands in a moment. In ZXDC, there are many commands that allow you to customize the look, feel, and behavior of your session. For instance, I may change my color settings or rearrange the watch window locations and command lines, as we mentioned earlier. These settings can be saved in profiles that allow you to set up different sets of customization for use under different scenarios. The profile menuing system can be reached by issuing the command profile without any operands. Profiles have been integral to ZXDC for quite some time, but a few new options have been added with ZXDC. First, an entirely new panel of ZXDC's profile menuing system has been added for ZXDC. It is the last option on the menu, High Level Language or HLL options. This specifies the settings for many C-specific options, including Auto Step On or Off, which we'll discuss more in a few minutes, and sets the step default to either into or over. The step command will be covered further in the next video. There are four factory default profiles built into CXDC, A80, A-wide, C80, and C-wide. The A versions are designed for assembler testing, while the C versions are for use with C testing. The 80 versions are for narrow 3270 displays of 80 columns, and the wide versions are for 3270s with 136 columns or more. As mentioned earlier, watch window command strings are saved within profiles. For the A80 and A-wide profiles, the default watch window display shows registers, PSWs, and the current BEA. For the C80 and C-wide profiles, the default watch window display is LVStack. However, all profile commands for ZXDC still apply in CXDC, and the watch window command strings can and should be modified as needed. There are three basic commands associated with profiles. Profile read, profile save, and profile reset. The profile read and save commands will work only if a profile library is allocated to the debugging session. For TSO, this is pretty much automatic. For batch job debugging, you will need to add an XDCPROFDD card to your jobs JCL. The profile library needs to be an FB80 PDS or PDSE. The profile read command loads a default or named session profile into ZXDC and activates it. If you do not specify a profile name, then your personal default XDC profile, if you have one, is used. If you do not have a personal default profile, ZXDC will look for a system-wide default profile from the current ZXDC release or from prior releases. If no system default XDC profile exists for any release, then profile read behaves like profile reset, loading a factory default profile. We'll discuss profile reset further in a moment. The profile save command saves the currently active session profile and its description into your personal profile library. As discussed earlier, this also includes the state of your watch windows. If you do not specify a profile name, the currently loaded profile's name is used. The list profiles all command will display a list of all profiles available to the debugging session. Note that you may save profiles named A80, A-wide, C80, and C-wide to create private versions of the factory default profiles. The Profile Reset command loads one of ZXDC's hard-coded factory default profiles, A80, A-wide, C80, or C-wide. Profile Reset is context-sensitive. If you do not specify a name, then ZXDC will select one of the factory default profiles based on an examination of current circumstances. Note that Profile Reset is different from Profile Read if you have issued a Profile Save command that saved changes to one of the default profiles. Profile Reset will always reload the factory default profile from within ZXDC rather than a user-saved version, while Profile Read will load a saved profile, if any, from disk, even when the given name is the name of a factory default profile. When ZXDC starts, it issues a Profile Read XDC command. If this fails, then a Profile Reset is issued. After your session starts, you may issue a profile read command to select a special profile for your specific purposes. 
We expect that users will issue Profile Reset C once, customize their settings and windows, and then issue Profile Save. This will create a user default profile named XDC that will be reloaded on each session startup. There are two important settings built into ZXDC that you should be aware of. The first is Auto Map, which is part of ZXDC and has been expanded for CXDC. The second is Auto Step, which is specific to CXDC. ZXDC can load and use Load Module Maps, Assembler CSECT and DSECT maps built from SIM data or A data, and C program maps built from DWARF data. You can use the map command to have ZXDC load maps as you need them, or you can turn on auto map. When auto map is turned on, ZXDC will automatically load available maps whenever it receives control due to a breakpoint or abend and detects that execution has reached a particular module or CSECT for the first time. Auto map is turned on by default. You can enable AutoMap using the command set AutoMap on or disable using set AutoMap off. With CXDC, AutoMap will map your program using the available dwarf data, then A data, and finally SIM data. Maps are optional for assembler debugging, but are required for C debugging. Step is a new command built for CXDC that executes the current C statement and stops on the following statement. STEP has operands that control where execution will be halted following the STEP command, into, over, or out. We'll look into the STEP command in detail in the next video, but for now, let's look at the new Auto Step feature. CXDC's Auto Step feature allows CXDC to step directly into your C user code. Auto Step is designed to automatically skip function, prologue, and epilogue code in XLC programs. It is triggered when a CXDC debugging session is started and the target is an XLC, C++, or Metal C program. AutoStep then allows execution of prolog code to run without interruption. Execution is not stopped until it reaches the machine code underlying your program's first C statement. Subsequent use of step will bypass tracing the prolog and epilog code of functions. AutoStep is turned on by default. If auto step has been turned off, you can re-enable it using set step auto step equals on or by issuing profile reset C, which reloads that factory default profile. You typically do want CXDC to auto step. However, if you do want to trace the prologue and epilogue code of a function, specify set step auto step equals off and then proceed with trace commands instead of step commands. Function key definitions are also loaded and saved via the Profile Read, Save, and Reset commands. The factory default profile keys for assembler debugging, A80 and A-wide, versus XLC debugging, C80 and C-wide, differ mainly in the definitions of PF keys 9, 10, and 11. For assembler debugging, 9, 10, and 11 are set to various trace commands, which are suitable for stepping through machine instructions. For XLC debugging, 9, 10, and 11 are set to various step commands, which are suitable for stepping in, out, and over high-level language statements. In specialty displays, such as when displaying built-in help or when you're navigating within the profile menuing system, the function key definitions automatically change to commands more suitable to the specialty display. There you have it, the basics of ZXDC with ZXDC. Our next video will talk about the most important commands you'll use with CXDC and how they work. If you have any comments or questions about this video or about anything else having to do with CXDC or CXDC, feel free to contact our staff directly. We can be reached at techsupport at colsoft.com or by phone at 540-456-6164. You can also find more information on our website, www.colsoft.com, and in our LinkedIn users group, www.xdc.com. Thanks for watching.